it is undoubtedly a matter of immense pleasure for all of us that we have got assembled here to deliberate on the much debated and discussed national education policy that has got approved on 20th July 2020, replacing the previous national policy of education, 1986, almost after three and a half decades. Aiming to make the nation as global knowledge superpower, the policy has made revolutionary reforms in the Indian education paradigm comprising of school and higher education. The policy has been very apt and strongly believing in the need for diversity of education and in coherence for holistic learning, quite opposing the watertight compartments and straight-jacketed phenomena. But the academia, the educational practitioners look at its implementation side. It is imperative to see how the norms of the policy will be implemented. I, on behalf of the Department of Education, welcome you all for this event that we have started a series of talks related to the implementation of National Education Policy in 2020. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our chief guest, Professor Nilofar Hassan Khan, for accepting our invitation despite her, of her busy schedule and being with us today. We are also very grateful to our speaker, worthy speaker, Dr. Ashok Kumar Garia, who has accepted our invitation and who is with us for delivering or having a deliberation on the implementation of this national policy on education 2020. You have been an eminent educationist having a distinct contribution in modernizing and revitalizing the educational system. The Department of Education feels privileged to host this series of talks on new education policy 2020 because there is a dire need to create awareness about this policy among us teachers, students, officials and other stakeholders in the education system. The nation, National Education Policy 2020 is a milestone document in the context of nation building which is expected to overhaul the entire academic system in the country from pre-primary to tertiary level. The policy has introduced new subjects yet reduce the load of the curriculum on the students. National education policy is a forward looking proactive policy having all round inbuilt flexibility for all stakeholders especially like getting a degree at fast track, modular entry and exit, having subjects of their choice, students mobility from one institution to another institution. In between the program, by having academic bank of credits, getting fast track promotions, centralized research funding, graded autonomy to the colleges, etc. It means the aim for this era of Indian students to receive a holistic model of learning well equipped with cutting edge skills necessary to excel in the 21st century. It is, sir, high time to have the deliberation on the implementation of this policy for all the stakeholders, students, parents, teachers, public representatives, universities, media and civil society. We have to discuss and deliberate the themes related to the implementation of this policy because this is a challenge before the stakeholders that once the policy has been framed and we should be successful in implementation of this policy. So this lecture is an effort, I believe, that the Department of Education has taken a lead 
to create the awareness among faculty, students, prospective researchers in light of National Education Policy 2020 and discuss all issues at length. It's my pleasure to welcome all the participants of this event. I hope today's session will be informative and useful. We are the only affiliating university uh, with whom the maximum number of colleges are affiliated, whether our constituent colleges uh, or our, uh, you know, uh, affiliating uh, colleges. Uh, we have already started this exercise for the information of Dr. Ashokji. Uh, number of exercises even for the colleges uh, we have done. Uh, and uh, recently again one more exercise uh, they have to do it even at state level our higher education department is fully engrossed uh, in implementing new education policy uh, 2020 they are all geared up and so many meetings have been taken up of the vice chancellor and other bodies uh, so many seminars have been conducted recently we had a, a workshop of two days uh, where uh, all the vice chancellors of of uh, Kashmir, uh, you know, uh, province universities, they were present there. In fact, we chaired the sessions where the various uh, presentations were uh, done. Uh, so I feel, as you said, uh, that UT of JNK ha JNK has been the first to implement a cluster university model. So uh, I'm sure and uh, with confidence I say uh, UT of JNK will be again very efficient and will be the first uh, UT uh, or first place to implement this model and implement it very uh, efficiently because I know uh, we have done lots of exercises and uh, at the proper time when we have uh, you know uh, okay signal from uh, government of India to implement it will definitely do it and uh, I must say the community has the major role to play here I tell you the community has the immense role to play uh, here and it will be the community who will make this model accountable and who will make this model workable this is how I can uh, you know uh, see how the things will be in a community for example if there is a good private college belongs to community you know how we rope in that particular uh, you know uh, hospital for uh, intern uh, because it will be mandatory for them they will not be accredited or they will not be given affiliation they have to do it they have to place our students for internship our nursing uh, you know students for internship over there so you know things will these things will come up like this if there's a very good five star hotel in our Kashmir so our tourism it will be mandatory for them uh, they will have to place our uh, tourism students there for internship pay them some monthly honorarium this is how things will come up you know like this and if there's any other uh, you know uh, craft institute or if there's any other uh, you know uh, skill development institute at private sector the community has to collaborate with the uh, institutes whether university or whether the colleges uh, now uh, for example uh, there must be a question in our young minds that for instance all our colleges especially the rural colleges are not multidiscipline colleges i mean we don't have a science uh, fact a science discipline over there we may have only arts we may not have only commerce so what has already been discussed at higher education is step by step we are going going all the colleges won't be allowed to take uh, you know phd students because uh, there is a time given to uh, implement it fully. So definitely it will not be Im implemented fully. For example, eight of our degree colleges have been, uh, you know, uh, realized or have been approved to have this integrated PhD program over there. 
क्योंकि बाकी कॉलेज में वो फैसिलिटी नहीं होगी वी वॉन्ट गिव डिग्रीज लाइक दैट कि जहाँ बच्चों ने काम नहीं किया होगा और वेयर द फैसिलिटीज विल नॉट बी देयर द रोल ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर एफिलेटेड कॉलेज इज आर एकेडमिक Uh, you know control our academic control otherwise who gives this discipline is to be taught in this particular college it's the higher education department as dr ashok uh, said uh, university goes for inspection and accordingly we uh, you know we may say a particular college to start that particular discipline so uh, uh, there's a bigger role now for the state government also there's a role for universities also there's a role for industry there's a role for community all have to work together and then only this program will be successful and i must say that uh, our students have excelled because of our education policy because of our academic courses whether uh, in other parts of india or in our own uh, place they have excelled as dr ashok gave an example how our Uh, you know uh, students are excelling they are at the top positions not only from other parts of india even from our own place you must have seen how our students are excelling and i think this particular type of a degree course will give them give them more opportunity because uh, when we see at global level definitely this will have more uh, scope so uh, why this change has been thought of the world has changed the world has changed globally everything has changed uh, there's more role of technology uh, these days you must have seen long time back how the uh, you know uh, what were the empl- employment opportunities for example abhi bhi hamara wo mindset hai ki hame government ki job chahiye but uh, you know when you uh, you know uh, have a vision and you look forward nothing will be jobs will be very less but it will be your own acumen your own hard work and your own skill which will make you successful and successful you know persons in this society so for that this holistic development and overall development of individuals of our own students uh, is to be done and i am sure uh, that uh, university of kashmir our own uh, ut Uh, the other universities of india uh, are responsible enough that before we implement this model in our own institutions we'll see that everything is in place and i'm sure uh, you know by these deliberations by the seminars by various workshops definitely these will pave way to uh, you know to devise a successful model for our own ut Uh, how to implement it and how to implement it very successfully since announcement of new education policy 2020 there are series of lectures and seminars have been conducted in university of kashmir in order to aware and understand the contents of new education policy before i formally start my speech i just want to make clear that this education policy has not been prepared by the government it is you and me all the senior professors educationist and the other experts of the country and the stakeholders set together discussed deliberate deliberated so many things for years together and there there after this document has come to the government government has simply endorsed it and placed before the public it is not a act it is not the law of the land it is a policy guidelines or rather you can say it is a benchmark which everybody will try to achieve it and as more they will achieve they will get more gradings more accreditations more recognitions and at the end they will be considered as 
top educational institutions. So yesterday, some uh, one professor asked a question to me, whether it is compulsory. I as such, it is not mandatory. But after some time, you will find that without this, iske bagayat gujara nahi. So that way, it is compulsory. First of all, what was the vision? Who said to define our education policy? The vision was very clear that multidisciplinary colleges and universities in each district of our country. They were they were visualizing that after 20 years, 10 years, our country, our every district of our country will have multidisciplinary colleges and universities. So it will not be wonder when every district will have colleges and universities and awarding degrees. Then unitary colleges will be closed. Unitary college, if we call unitary college, unitary college means a simple B.A. college, a simple, simple pharmacy college, a simple humanity college, they will have to be converted into multidisciplinary or they will have to be closed. And third option is, which is implemented in Kashmir, and I think the Kashmir will be the, the, uh, the role model for the entire country where the concept of cluster colleges or cluster universities will come, which has come here in Kashmir. If the, there are three, four, five unitary colleges, and they have no capacity, no infrastructure, no land to increase, to make it multidisciplinary, then there will be a cluster of colleges and that will be, that cluster, that particular cluster will be considered as an autonomous college. And after some accreditation, some grading, it will be considered as cluster university. Then thereafter, establishment of NRF, which Madam has already said, Centralized National Research Foundation, which will, which will fund all the research projects. And last but not least is that light, light but tight regulation by single regulator. Nowadays there are so many regulators. Take a case of affiliated college. The first regulator of affiliated college is the affiliating university. Thereafter, state government is again one regulator. Thereafter, if the, if the course is controlled by a council, let's say uh, NCT, Beard College, then NCT is one more regulator. Then director of education is one more regulator. The professors and the staff of the college devote more than uh, half of their time in complying with the regulation, regulator's requirement. So the, where the teaching effect, if there are multi-regulators, then teaching will be definitely affected. But I am in the higher education line since 2001. I am a chairman of an affiliated college where three, four councils are involved. I find my director all the time signing the papers, preparing the papers and the registrar compiling the documents and they just forget teaching. So it is good that there should be one regulator and one regulator should also be having least regulation. There should be, we should come in the process of self-regulation. And transparent things, everything we should show on our website, how much teachers we have, how much infrastructure we have, how much students we have, how much fees we are charging, what is our losses, what is our profit, what is what, and what grants, what scholarship we are getting, how our teachers are involved in research, how our teachers are involved in teaching, how our students and teachers are involved in extracurricular activities, everything should come on your website. And on the basis of a website, a person sitting in Delhi or somewhere else can see and evaluate yourself. That's, that is the ideal situation 
which this policy envisages should come in the gradual time. Now, what are the features of this uh, education policy? I am trying to be very simple and focused so that everybody can understand it. My dear friends, education policy has come. And we have to read it again and again. I am a law student also and I am a commerce student also. Whenever there is a problem, I again read the law. And whenever I read the law, I find something new in that. So, it is not that it has come, we, have, we know each and everything, now the, the entire focus is on implementation. Implementation is must, we have to do it. We have no option but to implement it. But we should read it again and again. So, what are the features? University, what is the university in the eyes of new education policy? University means a multidisciplinary institution of higher learning that offers undergraduate, postgraduate programs with high quality research and community engagement. The word is community engagement. I want to underline this. Every institution, every university has to engage the community. They cannot run in isolation. They will have to run in, in, in co cooperation or in collaboration with the community. What is the significance of this community? I'll deal later. So there are, with this definition, there will be two types of universities. First, A, research intensive universities. Those universities will emphasis on research. Their main emphasis will be on research. However, there will be some teaching also. And there will be second category is the teaching intensive universities. The teaching intensive universities where greater emphasis will be on teaching and but they will also conduct some research. My dear friends, by 2040-2040, all colleges and universities will be multidisciplinary and their strength will be minimum 3,000 students in each institution. This is, a, uh, this is a planning of the new education policy. It is planned that gross enrollment ratio will be 50% by 2035. Gross enrollment ratio in higher education will be 50% of the students who are passing 12th class. It is planned to establish outstanding public institution in large numbers in country. They will act as a model colleges and universities. Now it is an obligation on the government, central government and the state government. It has been provided in the education policy that in the large number there will be public institutions like University of Kashmir is a public institution. Public institutions will be established and they will act as a role model. They will act as a mentor to the private institutions nearby area. So it is a, it is a challenge on the central government that they have to increase their budget inflow. I will come to the budget later on. but. Uh, with this budget, either in the central government or in the state government, nothing can be done. I, I will come to that. Gradually, by 15 years, affiliating university will be closed. They will be converted into multidisciplinary university. Nowadays, the University of Kashmir is an affiliating university. They have their own campus. They have their own students. They have their own departments but their major students are from affiliating colleges. Like where our Ghaziabad campus is there, our, our main university is CCS University Merit. CCS University Merit has got more than 800 affiliated colleges. More than 800 affiliated colleges. Lacks and lacks of the students are registered and they are giving exams. And thousands of institutions are paying lakhs of rupees every year crores of rupees every year to the university. If I, uh, if I am not wrong, my university, CCS University Merit, is taking near about 500 to 600 crore rupees every year from affiliated colleges. And that is their income. Now this income will go. They will be converted into a university campus and they will have to focus on the teaching and research. So, 
in this policy it has been clearly defined that gradually by 15 years affiliating university will be closed they will be converted into multidisciplinary universities the multidisciplinary universities will have now what is the multidisciplinary university the multidisciplinary universities will have academic academic means all academics science arts commerce technical means engineering and polytechnic professional means management pharmacy the management courses professional courses then vocational education means i iti in a one campus there will be all facilities and if it is not possible in one campus then cluster cluster of colleges which have all these facilities this is the character of multidisciplinary university so that the student can choose subject of his or her choice choosing no water tight compartments no boxes that these students are from humanities these students are are from science these students from uh, commerce these students pro are from engineering now there will be a like buffet dinner students who has passed 12th exam he has come buffet is there in each semester he will select the subjects he will earn the credit and after earning so much of credit he will be awarded degree graduation that i will deal later on all hais all higher education institutions will focus on research and innovation by setting up startups incubation centers technology development centers established industry academic linkage in the interdisciplinary research in the area of social issues honorable vice chancellor is sitting here i just want to request we should allow interdisciplinary research we we are still if he has done pg in geography then how can he done how can he do phd in social science if he has done P, uh, M, uh, msc botany he cannot do phd in a, in a subject of physics or in a subject of social science we'll have to change it now the professors are sitting and they should assess when they and uh, what is what do you call rdc research development committee what is the job of research development committee then the professors are sitting a, a candidate has come say yes i want to do research on this topic you please assess me preliminary if i can do allow me why why going to my past records so for example i am a student of commerce i did my chartered accountancy but i switched on to education now from since 2001 i am in the education if anybody can ask me you are a chartered accountant you are a commerce student how you enter into an education and now you are giving lecture on education policy how can you do this but i am doing this because it is a matter of interest why can i do then then in the education policy i will move up further outcome the heading is outcome what is the outcome envisaged in the new education policy it is expected that that a student after completing graduation one should have developed following attributes in his personality it is not that what we can do he has taken admission we have taken exam after passing of the exam we have awarded degree to him this is not the intention of universities and higher education institution the the policy maker says the if a student remained 3 years in the university and did, did regular classes then there should be some change in his personality and then he should be known as a product of that particular university like this student is a product of university of kashmir how he will be described he will be bcom bcom is everywhere bcom no because he has got these attributes or there is no end of these attributes you can add more attributes to it if if it is a, just like manufacturing says manufacturing industry says this, if this is a apple mobile then it this apple mobile will have these features if it if these features are not there it is not apple mobile 
if he is a product of a university of Kashmir, then he will have these attributes. If he is not that, he is not the student of university of Kashmir. That type of attributes we should have. That is, it is a critical and imaginative thinking in the area of science, technology, humanities, commerce, vocational education. He should have a critical and imaginative thinking. Second one, one should have problem solving ability. One should have communication skills and teamwork attitude. One should be socially and morally aware about ethical behavior and practice. And one should be innovative by approach and research oriented. This is a very big challenge given to the teachers of the university. That what we are doing and therefore not only academic teaching but counseling is also integral part of your duty. You have to counsel the students also. I will deal this subject later on. Now come to next piece, duration of course. The undergraduate degree program will be of either three years or four years duration with multiple exit options. In this period, three or four years after completion of one year, there are the graduation can be completed in three years and that three year graduation is valid for all competitive exams. But graduation can also be done in four years. If somebody is doing, let, let's take the example of BCom. If th somebody is doing three years BCom, it will be considered as BCom only. Then if he's done four years, then it will be research degree in BCom. Maybe honors or something like that. four years. That would be research degree. Now, I request the Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor and the deans, we should plan our curriculum like this. That because there is an open entry and open exit system now. One can enter and one can go and thereafter again can come and complete this. So we should plan our curriculum like this. If, if somebody completes one year, we should be able to issue a certificate of that particular discipline. If somebody completes two years, we should be able to issue him a diploma in that particular discipline. If somebody completes three years, we should be able to issue a graduate degree in that discipline. We should design syllabus like interlinked. One stage, second stage, third stage, like this. We in our university are preparing the syllabus like this. So that there should the value addition in every year. If somebody has done one year and he has got emergency in his home or some financial condition is not allowing him, he can withdraw. After some year, he can again come and do it. After some year, he can come and again do it. And every year, when he is devoting some time, he is getting something. First year, he got certificate. Second year, he got diploma. Third year, he got degree. And if he has again gone for fourth year, then he has got research degree. As I said, three years degree course will be sufficient for appearing in a competitive exam. It will be a full-fledged graduate degree. If opts for complete four years, then it will be research degree. In this year, major area of study will be research on a particular subject. Now come to PG programs. The PG master degree program will be of two years. For students who have completed graduation course in three years, PG program will be of one year who has completed four years. PG program for three years student who has graduated in three years will be two years. And those who has completed graduation in four years means research degree, then his PG will be of one year. And for PhD program, now research graduate can directly enter into PhD program, no need to do PG. If it is a research degree, having four year uh, research degree program, then he will direct, he can be directly enter into PhD for you. And the, the universities and institutions can start integrated course like five year UG PG program. Integrated program of five year in any discipline where will be UG and PG both combined. And now there will be no MPhil program in any university. Now come to support, support for students support for students. The teachers will be fully trained to act as a mentor and guide of the students. The counseling of the students will be integral part of day-to-day -day teaching of the teachers and which is very much missing. The teachers feel 
that our duty is only to teach. I said earlier also. Now it is in the part of the policy. We are following it since 2009. And in our Ghaziabad campus, we are following it since 2001. That every teacher is a counsellor. We are allotting 30 students to each teacher that you have to act as a guide, friend and philosopher of that student. That is essential, important. So, the teacher will be fully trained and for that we need a special training to the teachers that how to become a counsellor and how to become a role model. The teacher has to be a role model of the student. The students from socially and economically backward students will be encouraged to complete their education of their choice, appropriate financial, moral, emotional support will be given. Now, how it will be given? Appropriate financial, moral, emotional support will be given. How it will be given? One way, the state government will give scholarship or the central government will give scholarship. Now, I remind you that why I emphasize involvement of community. Every institution has to involve community with it. And if there are some poor students, there are some needy students, there are students from backward area, then the community, the principal or the vice chancellor of that particular university or the deans of that university or that institution will, uh, will, will create scholarship in the help of the community and those students will be provided all help and their education will be completed. All the time we cannot see the face of the government that the government will give, we will not do anything. We will have to do it. Similarly, for all infrastructure, infrastructure facilities, always we we, we infrastructure nahi hai. Government is not giving anything to us. Why do not involve, we involve the society for that? If there is a degree college in a particular town, it is the duty of the civil society of that particular town to update that college and from all respect. So, this, this, therefore, the word has been used, engagement of community. In order, to, in order to successfully run ODL and online education program, the courses, teaching modules, study materials and online lectures will be prepared and it will be ensured that quality of ODL and online educational program is nowhere compromised. Nowadays, there is a fashion that if we cannot read regular, the regular is something typical, difficult, go in a distance mode, get degree, thank you very much. Not that. First of all, who should go for distance education? Distance education should be allowed to those only, those who are in the employment and they want to upgrade their education. Those who are not employment, those who have not, they are not graduated, even they are not graduated, they should not be allowed for distance education. They should come into the college, take regular graduation degree, take the employment and if they want to upgrade their education, they should go for it. And the distance education quality should not be compromised anywhere. It should be more difficult than the regular study. If somebody take admission in distance, he should say, Isse to mein regular le leta to tha. This should be the outcome of the distance. All educational program either online, offline or in audible mode will be students friendly and will achieve global standards of quality. Now, internationalization. This is very important aspect. Why so? I'll tell you. First, we understand what, the, what it says. All higher education institutions will make efforts to attract international students in the area of studies like engineering, health sciences, computer and IT, and other Indian courses like astrology, yoga, ayush, arts, music, history, culture, etc. India will be promoted as a global study destination providing premium education at affordable cost, thereby helping to restore its role as Vishwa Guru in the world. These are the two points I just want to explain. Why? Why so? Every institution should have an international student say, number one. 
Number two, there, there should be a policy to attract the international students. Why we are doing so? There are two things. That we have a great potential to attract international students, especially Kashmir. Because the, the fee structure in Europe, America is, is quite high. Many times of our fee structure here. And the quality of education is gradually increasing in our country. And if we we'll implement this NEP, then our education policy will, our, our education system will be at par with international standards. So then why not we should attract these students? Why we, we need? Because we need dollars. You are seeing the petrol prices are increasing. Everything is prices are increasing because we had to import so many things and for that we have to pay dollars. You see, you have seen the economic uh, economy of Sri Lanka is just collapsed. And the economy of our neighbor country is about to collapse, that is Pakistan. But the days are not far. If we have not awakened, then our position will be the same. So we, every, every educational institution should know that we have to earn some dollars. And how we will earn the dollars? will attract the foreign students. So we have to attract the foreign students. That is one requirement. Now, your eyes will be opened. I am giving you some figures. Every year from India, every year from our country, 8 lakhs students are going out. 8 lakhs students. And how much amount we are spending on them is Mind-boggling. Two, two lakh seventeen thousand crore rupees we are spending on these eight lakh students every year. Two lakh seventeen thousand crore rupees we are spending. We have to stop it. And therefore this education policy. Therefore this standardization of education. Because every year we are spending two crore seventeen lakhs dollar rupees and it is going in the form of dollars outside India. We have to stop it. We have to create our in educational infrastructure like this that the every student should take education from here and do not think to go out. This is, this is a mind-boggling figure and therefore there is, there is a chapter in the new education policy of internationalization. Now I will move forward because the time limited is short. One more thing which I want to tell is, 100 top universities of the world will be invited to open their campuses in India. And similarly, the top higher institutions of India will be allowed to open their campuses overseas. We, University of Kashmir can open campus anywhere in the world, it will be a welcome step. It would be a good. We will be cheering and we will give big hands to our Honorable Vice Chancellor. So, but the challenge is that the top 100 world class universities are coming in India and they will provide all facilities here and then what would be of our institutions where 40-50% of the professor's position is vacant. We don't have professors. We don't have infrastructure. If the exam is declared, then we have to give holidays to others. That you do exam hoga. When exam is hoga, tab tum padne aana. I have seen the colleges where if the exams are being taken in tent houses in the playground because they don't have that much of room where they could conduct the exam. It means the students are not coming for classes. They are only coming for giving exams. Because the exams are to be conducted in tent and the SP and the DM is on duty that everything goes very well. I have seen from my, my own eyes. 
in a college where rooms are 20 admissions are 18000 how we will face how we will face this 100 top universities if they have come in our country what would be our future you will be given salary if the students are there if the students are not there who will give you salary because nobody will come to you like in the government schools nobody is no kids are going all are going in convent schools if the public schools are available they will go there similarly if the max hospital is there who will go to the renawadi hospital will go to max it is the max who has to come it is not renawadi who has to update because it is he has to but we should think that renawadi has to be up updated As Otherwise, Max will take over everything. Very, very, very crucial points we are discussing. So, we we'll move to other motivated, energized and capable faculty. Very important chapter. Because the students and the faculty members, the teachers, are the backbone of, backbone of the education system. If they are not motivated, energized, and if they are not capable, nothing can be done. The teachers will be fully trained to act as a mentors and guides of the students. The counseling of the students will be an integral part of day-to-day -day teaching of the teachers. Regular training, counseling and updating knowledge of faculties. Here I just want to remind the Honorable Vice Chancellor. We, we designed faculty development program in, con in collaboration with uh, UGC and all other institutions and faculty development programs are being done. My humble submission is that in faculty development program these, the senior peoples are coming and they are, they are telling about the subjects. Subjects. They tell what are the development of the subject, what is the subject and what are the dimensions of the subject but they do not teach how to teach, how to handle the students, how to manage the class, how to counsel the students. Please infuse all these things or also. Subject, subject knowledge is available everywhere. The student, the teacher who has qualified, who has qualified net exam, if he is a PhD, he or she, they know the subject. But the, how to deliver it? in a most lucid manner, in a most convenient manner to these students. Transferring knowledge from one person to another person is not a mechanical manner. It is a, it is a combination of knowledge and heart, both. Knowledge and heart. If heart is motivated, yes, I have to deliver it. No students to whom I have taken the classes will fail in my subject. If he fails, I am failed. That feelings when counts, when teacher delivers. My student misbehaving somebody is a spot on me. It is a spot on me. If my student, I am a counselor of that student and he is misbehaving with a teacher, he is misbehaving with a student, then it is a spot on me. That type, of, that type of feeling will come. That type of prestige issues will come. Then only things are delivered. Then the knowledge transfer takes place. All HEIs will be equipped with the basic infrastructure and facilities including clean drinking water, clean working toilets, blackboards, office, libraries, labs, pleasant classroom spaces and campuses. Every classroom shall have access to the latest educational technology that enables better learning experiences. All these things will not be given by the government. Or they will give, give one time, but they will not maintain it. I tell you from this stage, with responsibility. This is to be done by yourself. With the engagement of community. Teaching, counselling and research will be an integral part of a teacher. Teaching, counselling and research will be an integral part of duties of a teacher. There will be an adequate student-teacher ratio so that no excessive workload is imposed on teachers. Now, 
practice of two way teaching theory and student centric teaching methodology will be applied this two way teaching theory we have evolved although, although it is not very new thing but we have evolved and practiced madam is here she is a director in our institute in ghaziabad we have practiced this method since 2000 and we with proud we can say that we are following it and 60% of our this methodology and this this uh, theory has been applied where the teacher teaches and then the student teaches teacher teaches one unit and then the student teaches that same unit to their peer group and sometime to the teacher also by way of chart assignment and presentation it is a mandatory for every student to give chart presentation and assignment in the and this this is this is go by rotation this practice is to be applied i am happy to announce that i have given this suggestion when new education policy was being being prepared i have given this suggestion three suggestion one suggestion of two way teaching theory another suggestion was relating to counseling and third third was relating to if we complete one year we should give him certificate if we complete second year we should give him diploma if we complete third year we, these three suggestion which i have given i met to secretary higher education government of india and i have given him personally and then it was i am happy to announce that it was implemented as it is it has been incorporated in new education policy excellence in teaching counseling and research will be properly awarded there should be a system in the university or in the institution ki those teachers who are religiously following this type teaching counseling and research should be awarded should be suitably awarded every year that should be a regular practice now we are i believe that we are sitting in the education department and so it's my duty to enlighten something about education i'm very sorry to say the 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 new pl the planners said the teacher education system in our country will be completely changed it will be completely changed the present structure and working of ncet will be completely closed now what will be the new change will be there will be complete change in education system the minimum minimum qualification to be a teacher is should be a integrated course of ba ba bsc ba bcom ba like that integrated course <laughs> number 1 number 2 a student who has completed 3 years degree with a specialized subject of education then he can do ba of 2 years a student who has completed 4 year 4 year degree with a specialization in education he can he can complete ba in 1 year similarly there will be mad of 2 years and 1 years and one more thing is that that there will be from kashmir to kanyakumar with attack to katak there will be same education system and there will be one entrance by national testing agency to enroll in bed programs one test one test then this the 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 bright students the intelligent students the committed student should take the profession of teaching for that special scholarship will be launched after completion of 12th there will be a special scholarship of those students who are aspirants of becoming a teacher then it is it will be compulsory on all phd scholars it will be compulsory on all phd scholars to take classes in the schools irrespective of the subject in which he is doing phd he might be doing phd in in nanotechnology or he might be doing phd in any engineering subject or any or any any other subject but he will have every phd scholar will have to come to the school and take minimum classes as prescribed in the school 
he will have to act as a school teacher for some time, then only he will be awarded PhD degree. The 12th five year plan from 2012 to 17 estimated that only a very small percentage of the Indian workforce in the age group of 19 to 25, less than 5 percent, received formal vocational education. Whereas in countries such as USA, the number is 52 percent. In USA, the vocational education percentage is 52 percent. In Germany, it is 75 percent. And in South Korea, it is 96 percent. And ours is 5 percent. We all believe in white, white collar job. So, these numbers only underline the urgency of the need to hasten the speed of the spread of vocational education in India. So, the vocational education will be the integral part of university education system now. For that, they will have either have to open a ITI in their campus or they will have to collaborate with some industries who are in the in the profession of providing vocational education, skill-oriented skill education, or they will have to collaborate with NSDC, National Skill Development Corporation, but they will have to do it. So now vocational education and every student, every student will necessarily, uh, within the uh, completion of the graduation time, he will have to complete one vocational education also. The details I am leaving I am only saying that by 2025, it has been envisaged that our 50% of the learners should get vocational education. Now, I'm coming to research. There are so many research scholars are here. In order to promote and regulate research, National Research Foundation will be established. The primary activities of the NRF will be to fund competitive, peer-reviewed grant proposals of all type and across all disciplines, across all disciplines, to fund for research facilities at academic institutions, particularly at universities and colleges where research is currently in a nascent stage through mentoring of such institutions. Act as a coordinating agency between researchers and concerned department of government and industry with respect to identification of area of research and also updating the latest development in the research took place, recognizing outstanding research and progress. Now this is about research, now we come to regulatory system. As I said, light but tight regulation. There will be first National Higher Education Regulatory Council, first there will be regulatory commission. The regulatory system of higher education, in order to regulate the entire higher education system except law and medicines, one supreme authority known as Higher Education Commission of India will be constituted. Now it is in the process to be constituted. It is Higher Education Commission of India will be constituted and it will have four councils. Nowadays there is UGC is the apex body, UGC will go. The activities of the UGC will be very limited. In place of that UGC, Higher Education Commission, NC, AICT will go, NCT will go, Pharmacy Council will go, ICR will go. Under Commission, there will be four councils. National Higher Education Regulatory Council. This council will regulate the entire courses, or entire all higher education institutions where the university and colleges all will be under him, under it. And more, as I said, everything will be online transparent. Transparent. Khula hisab hai. Anybody can assess you. Your all complaints will be online and all solutions will be online. Second thing is National Accreditation Council, which is NEC, now, now it will be NSC. The National Accreditation Council, it will accredit every college, every institution and kindly understand the mechanism. What is the mechanism? A college will be accredited. If it gets that benchmark, it will be autonomous college. Then autonomous college after some time will be accredited and it will become university. Then university will be accredited. 
it will be categorized as a teaching intensive university or research intensive university then it will become teaching intensive university then again it will be accredited and it will become research intensive university this will be step by step you get on lete jao aur podi chadte jao ek ek seedi chadte jao aage badhte jao ek ek seedi jitni seediyan chadoge utne autonomous hote chale jaoge interference khatam hota jayega there will be no interference then nobody can touch you if you are a research intensive university even nobody can enter and ask you what are you doing your vice chancellor will be the whole sole authority of that similarly teaching intensive university no affiliation no jagda kuch nahi these are the students i have to teach them and i have to update their quality then the cluster universities then autonomous colleges these are the categories like this then third so everything will depend upon the accreditation this national accreditation concept then the higher education grant concept this will grant this council will grant like ugc it the ugc's role will be like this now no regulation no daily letters only thing they they will assess your application of grant and they will give grant you grant or they will say no to you that's all then general education council all these councils like nct like aict like pharmacy council of india like icar like ncbt all these councils will sit in this general education council and what they will do they will draft course curricula that would be model course curriculum they will draft the outcome of this curriculum and they will give suggestions to update it time to time because these councils will have now we do not have regulatory power they will have to do only academic and research work in respect to drafting curriculum drafting outcomes and updating the curriculum that's all now we to come to the conclusion the national education policy 2020 is a vast document ranging from 1 to 200 pages it is very difficult to conclude such a detailed document however the main points can be summarized in the following manner under this policy the aims is that india must have an education system what they are saying you should understand not only understand we should imbibe isko bilkul andar hriday tak utar lo pet mein utar lo isko what this is what we have to be under this policy the aim is that the india must have an education system by which up to 2040 that is second to none our education should be system should be second to none second to none means the entire world we are challenging to the entire we are first we are not claiming first but we are not second to none ethical human and constitutional values every student in nowadays what is our constitution every student should know what is our constitution what is our democratic rights and what is our democratic duties so ethical ethical human and constitutional values like empathy respect for others cleanliness courtesy democratic spirit spirit of service respect for public property scientific temper liberty responsibility pluralism equality and justice and i add one more thing that is coexistence we have to learn every indian has to learn every teacher has to learn because teachers are the architect of tomorrow teachers are the architect of tomorrow what type of society we wants what type of country we wants it will be decided by teachers not by the physical they can they can create good maps they can create a good map of this whole but they cannot create souls human beings it is to be created by you people so we are the we all together are the architect of this nation therefore we have to remind that we have to teach first thing which we have to teach is this is in india where multiple di- diversity is there 
multiple religions are there, multiple beliefs are there, multiple tastes are there, multiple figures are there, multiple features are there. We have to go together. Unity in diversity, not by slogan, by heart. And so that, so that we have to teach that we have to live in coexistence and we in any circumstances, in any condition, we may be affected by that even, we may be victims of that, even then we have not to teach hatred. We have not to teach hatred. To anybody, in any situation, the, the word of hatred should not come from our heart, from our mouth. As teachers, never. Focus on regular formative assessment for learning rather than summative assessment that increase today's coaching culture. We have to change, Honorable Vice Chancellor, we have to change our examination system. We have to, we have to take the exam of learning of the concept, not, not learning of the things. Imaginative questions. If you have read Mahatma Gandhi, give a question. In today's situation, what Mahatma Gandhi would have done? Will done. Suppose you are a Mahatma Gandhi, what you will do to deal with this situation? Ask the question. The answer is not available in book. He has to think from his own mind on the basis of his study of Mahatma Gandhi. He will apply his mind. Application of mind should be there, not parroting, not ratification. Respect for diversity and respect for the local context in all circumstances and all curriculum. Clearly written, respect for diversity and respect for the local context in all curriculum, pedagogy and policy, always keeping in mind that education is a concrete subject. Synergy in curriculum, synergy in curriculum across all levels of education from early childhood care and education to school education to higher education. There should be synergy from school education to higher education. Teachers and faculties are the heart of the learning process. Their recruitment, continuous professional development, positive working environment and service conditions are must. Light but tight regulatory frameworks to the ensure integrity, transparency and resource efficiency of the educational system through audit and public disclosure while encouraging innovation and out-of-the-box ideas through autonomy, good governance and empowerment. Outstanding research as a requisite for outstanding education development. Now we have to define what type of research we should do. Continuous review of progress based on sustained research and regular assessment by educational experts. A rootedness, root, go to your roots. If we go to Kashmir, we should know what is the roots of Kashmir. If we go to the roots of the Kashmir, then we'll, we'll find out Kashmiriyat. Then we'll find out Sufism. Then we'll find out the Seva is our dharma. Our religion is service to the nation, service to the humanity. Welcome. Go to your roots. And pride in India and its rich, diverse, ancient and modern culture and knowledge system and traditions. Education is a public service. Access to quality education must be considered as a basic right of every child. Substantial investment in a strong, vibrant public education system as well as the encouragement and facilitation of true philanthropic, private and community participation. Now, now, from my side, there are certain suggestions which I want to give. There should be compulsory moral education paper up to graduation level. Honorable Vice Chancellor, I, I seek your attention in this. There should be compulsory moral education paper up to graduation level which should teach morality, ethics, nationalism, freedom movement of India, national heroes, saints, educationists, scientists, etc. And that should be compulsory paper in all disciplines. It should qualify by the student at least 60% marks he, he should get. So 60% marks and it should be compulsory paper and if he is not qualified it, he should not get degree so that he should know what is our nation 
and he should be la- he should be taught what is patriotism what is real religion what is the true meaning of islam what is the true meaning of hinduism what is the true meaning of Buddh- buddhism what is the true meaning of jainism he should be taught completely true meaning true meaning what is that the government of india should establish a national education finance corporation nefc which should grant loans to higher education institution long term and short term on concessional rate of interest for creation of necessary infrastructure loans should be given to public and private institutions without any discrimination it should also grant loans to students to needy students on very nominal rate of interest repayment of loan should be ensured through convenient installments and then after doing this what i i have written it to the education minister and prime minister also that 50 lakhs crore rupees should be provided in education finance corporation by at central level and 10 lakhs crore should be set apart by at at every state level and then there after after doing this all grants and all scholarship should be stopped by doing so there will be equal playing field for public and private institutions <laughs>